Well, let's take a look at the male and female pelvis. First of all, this is the false pelvis here, and then this inside would be the true pelvis. Uh, the male pelvis, you can appreciate, has an angle that's less than 90 degrees, what we call the pubic angle. And the female pelvis is greater than 90 degrees, so it's very easy to tell male from female. You can also appreciate these pads here. This is the symphysis pubis on both the male and the female cadaver. The other thing that you can tell with male and female, although it's not necessarily evident in these models, is the coxal bones will usually point downward, more downward on the female, and they'll curve more inward on the male. Okay, good. So you can tell the male by its tail, so to speak. All right. All right. All right, well, let's take a look at uh, some muscles, some psoas muscles, and then we're going to be looking at the lumbar and sacral plexus. Um, this is a tendon of the uh, psoas minor muscle. You can see the minor muscle rests on top of the major muscle. So I'm going right along the major, and then on top of it is the minor. So as major and minor. These muscles help to flex the thigh at the hip. So like a marching band, people stepping high in a marching band, huh? That's the marching band muscle. Uh, another muscle that goes along with that is the, is the iliacus. And so many times we refer to this group of muscles as the iliopsoas. So iliacus for ilio and then psoas referring to these two psoas muscles. They both have the same point of insertion and that point of insertion is the lesser trochanter. Now, this muscle here is quadratus lumborum. Quadratus lumborum is going to help to flex the trunk of the body so when you're taking a bow or when you're going, you're uh, flexing from side to side, quadratus lumborum is going to participate in that. Notice it goes from the iliac crest to the first rib. So point of origin, iliac crest, point of insertion, the first rib. Um, okay, let's take a look at these uh, plexuses now. This first one, this first nerve is called the iliohypogastric nerve. The iliohypogastric nerve is going to be innervating the abdominal muscles along with the skin of the buttocks. This is the ilioinguinal nerve. This is going to be innervating uh, the region around the groin. Okay, so ilioinguinal. Um, this one here, going on top of the psoas muscle, so it's a good landmark, is the genital femoral. This one's going to be innervating the immediate skin, I would say proximal skin around the uh, femur, as well as the genitals. So genital femoral, huh? And then this one is the lateral femoral cutaneous. This is innervating the skin along the side of the leg, the lateral side of the leg, um, particularly I should say the thigh, the lateral side of the thigh. The one crawling out from underneath the psoas muscle is the femoral muscle. This one is predominantly innervating the quadriceps muscles. And then the final nerve here is here, and also I think I see it a little bit on this side right here. This is the obturator nerve, travels through the obturator foramen, and it is referred to as, again, the obturator because of the place it travels to. However, this is going to be innervating the adductor muscles, the ADD ductor muscles that we'll talk about soon. Okay, great, is yeah, the sacral plexus, which is this whole structure here. And then the one nerve I want you to pay attention to on the sacral plexus is this nerve. This is the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve, in effect, uh, innervates not only the leg, but also the posterior thigh, particularly the hamstring muscles. Okay, good. Thank you.